Hello boys and girls, how are you all? I hope you're well. I hope you're having a lovely week at home with your mums and your dads and your grandparents or whoever's looking after you. Are you ready to get started for this week's edition of Online Faraway Storytelling? Can you remember how we start? Have you done this before? Or is this your first time here? If so, welcome. You need to cup your hands together and close your eyes as tight as tight can be so that you're ready to catch the magic that I'm going to sprinkle you from my wand all the way to you. You can find magic wherever you look. All you have to do is open a book. I love the idea that you can find magic just by opening a book. And that's certainly how it feels when you read a good book. Let's get started. I've got these three books to read you today. Each of these are available at Collins Booksellers on Lydia. You can buy them in store if you're in Ballarat, or you can go online and have a look for them. And there's something for everyone here this week. I've got a book about construction, demolition, a book about a bear who dances, and this one called Good Question. And we're gonna start with Good Question. Good Question is a tale told backwards. And it's by Sue Whiting and Annie White. Look at this, good question. It's got a fox, some magic, a wand. This looks a bit like a giant and a bit like a wolf. Maybe it's gonna be a bit of a fairy tale. Look at this. This tells me that maybe it's got some Jack and the Beanstalk. Maybe it's got a castle and a, the, the three bears. Lots going on, the three pigs. A wolf, a tale told backwards. Good question. Do you guys ever ask good questions? Psst, hey you, kid. Yes, you, is it safe down there? What? I know I'm in a tree. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? Why am I in a tree? Now that's a good question. I'll tell you why. I think this fox is going to be talking to us for this whole story. I'm hiding, you see, from that bully. Have you seen him? Thinks just because he's a giant who can throw his weight around, says I have no place in his story, that the best place for me is in a pot. Fox stew, imagine me in a pot. The cheek, why does he want me in a pot? Good question. Is that what you asked? Why does he want him in a pot? I'm interested to know whether you ask the same questions that the fox thinks we're asking. Look at those hairy hands. Revenge. That's why he wants him in a pot. So what if he found me with his silly old goose? Red-handed, I admit. But what use was it to him? It's just feathers and bones. A mere mouthful for a giant, but a feast for a fox, especially a hungry one like me. What? Why did I have his goose? Is that your question? Why did he have his goose? Not my fault, of course. It was Jack, that rascal. There I was climbing a beanstalk, totally massive. Anyhow, Jack was climbing it too, and he flung that goose right at me. I mean, what's a fox meant to do? I was hungry, famished actually, and here was a goose to chew. Huh? The beanstalk? Why was I climbing it? Wow, you really are nosy, aren't you? I was escaping, that's why, didn't I say? From that wily old wolf. Do you know him? He's everywhere. Boy, did he get his tail in a twist. He was snarling and snapping and carrying on a treat, telling me there's no room for foxes in his story. So I was like, see ya, Wolfie, I'm out of here. What was that? Speak up, kid. Why was the wolf carrying on a treat? Thought you'd never ask. This fox is causing a bit of trouble. He was angry, fuming actually, raging like a volcano. You see, I was in this twiggy shack, minding my own business like, when what did I find in there? A juicy pink piglet. 
How was I to know he was meant to be a wolf's dinner? Truly. Why was I in the pig's shack to begin with? You're full of questions, kid. Anyone ever tell you that? Is that what you wanted to know? Why was he in the pig's shack? Truth is, I was scared, that's why. Who wouldn't be? There I was, lost in the woods, alone, with a hollow, hungry belly, and guess what I smelt? Only delicious rolled oats with a good splash of honey, but none for me. Oh no. I just got roared at and sent packing and told that there was no porridge for foxes in this story. Why was I lost in the woods? Good question. You're a smart kid. Do you reckon that's the three bears from the story, the three bears with Goldilocks? This has got lots of different stories in it. This one, I like it. <laughs> so our question was, why was I lost in the woods? And he says, I was magicked there. Yes, indeedy. It's true. You've got to believe me. By a fairy godmother. Oh my, was she a sight. Whiskery chin and spiderweb hair and what a temper. Apparently foxes aren't welcome at the banquet at the prince's grand ball. Why was I at the grand ball? Thought you might ask that. He's on to us. He knows what questions we've got now. It was the field mice, a tasty mob of them. I crept up to take a look when, hey presto, one minute they're mice, then next they're horses. Grand carriage horses, galloping off into the night and whisking me off to all the wrong stories. And all because I was just a wee bit hungry. Do you know what those, that carriage and horses are from? Do you know the story of Cinderella? So, that's why I'm up this tree and I'm still hungry. Hold on, what's this? Is my luck changing? No more questions, kid. This is my story and it's dinner time. <laughs> Look what he's done. He's dropped an acorn on the chicken's head. The sky is falling. We must tell the king. I think the sky is falling because something fell on their head. So look what the fox is doing. He tricked them and now he's leading them away. Look at the look on his face. That was all told backwards. That was funny, wasn't it? And the way it had little bits of every story, some uh, Jack and the Beanstalk and there's Jack and some of the three bears. No Goldilocks though. There's a little bear up in the tree. Didn't see that before. And then some Cinderella. I love stories that kind of intertwine like that. That was really cute. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready for a song from Far Away Storytelling? What are you thinking? Gracie and Charlie, would you like the blue sparkles? Trust you two to choose a song that I might get wrong, Miss Polly. I know lots of you can help me though. Can't you, Damien? And Jackson, let's go. Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. So she called for the doctor to come quick, quick, quick. The doctor came with his bag and his hat and he knocked on the door with a rat-a-tat-tat. The doctor came and he shook his head. He said, Miss Polly put her straight to bed. He wrote on the paper for a pill, pill, pill. I'll be back in the morning. Yes, I will, will, will. I'm clapping because I got it right. All right. And if you rewind that and you get to the part where I start singing, um, he wrote on the paper and you'll see I have a little smile. It's because I know I'm very close to the end and I remembered all the words. Our second story today is called Demolition. I haven't uh, read many stories in online storytelling about construction. I, I usually do in store, but for some reason, I just haven't. They just haven't fallen into my hands. So this is exciting. I'm sure there's lots of you out there who like to read about diggers and trucks and wood and rocks and all the things that happen in a demolition. This is by Sally Sutton and illustrated by Brian Lovelock. And I'm sure one of you would be able to tell me what kind of machine that is. I can hear you, Hudson. 
let's see what happens when there's a demolition. Grab your gear, grab your gear, buckle, tie and strap. Safety jackets, boots and hats, zip, stamp, snap. Do you think this building's going to get knocked down? That's what a demolition is, something being knocked down. Swing the ball, swing the ball, thump and smash and whack. Bring the top floors tumbling down, bang, clang, crack. Look at that. That's how they do it with a big ball. Pretty cool to see. Work the jaws, work the jaws, bite and tear and slash. Dinosaurs had teeth like this. Rip, roar, crash. It looks a bit like a dinosaur, doesn't it? Pulling that building apart. Ram the walls, ram the walls, bash and smash and slam. First they wobble, then they fall, thud, creak, wham. Knocking that building down. Hose the dust, hose the dust, dampen down the dirt. Careful now, don't cough or choke, wish, splash, squirt. There would be a lot of dust if you think about if you were just to knock over a sand castle on the beach or something in your sand pit, there's a lot of dust that sprinkles around. Imagine knocking down a whole building. Crush the stone, crush the stone, chip and grind and munch. Make new concrete from the old, whir, chur, crunch. Look at going in there, all the old stuff, going through the machine and coming out here so they can use it again and use it for something else. Shred the wood, shred the wood, split and chop and chip. Turn the sawdust into mulch, screech, scrunch, rip. Have you ever walked past or seen a mulcher like that? Where it's putting in big bits of wood and spitting it out into tiny little pieces? Looks pretty amazing. Sort the steel, sort the steel, heave and toss and bang. Metal can be used again, clink, clank, clang. Load the trucks, load the trucks, lift and sift and heap. Drive away the piles of junk, womp, whop, beep. Clearing it all out. Oh, they're building something new where that building was. Build the hut, build the hut, tap and twist and knock. Don't forget the monkey bars, bim, bam, thwok. They're building a playground. Look at that. Can you remember what it was at the start? I'll show you. Go back to the very first page. That's what it was, an old empty building. And this is what it is now. Join the fun, join the fun, run and climb and play. Give three cheers, the job is done. Hip, hip, hooray. Guess what's in the back? Facts about machines. Tells you what a wrecking ball does, what an excavator does, a wood chipper, all these things. That's pretty cool. That's good if you're just learning about trucks or if you're a mum whose child loves trucks and you don't know what they all do. Hope you enjoyed that one. Are you ready to choose our next song for today's session? What are you thinking? Can I hear you, Jackson, choosing something? Or was that you, Peyton? Let's go for this one. The white one. Oh, do you know who I think it was? I think it was Sage. Because I know that she loves the little teapot. And that's what we're going to sing. I'm a little teapot. You have to stand up for this one. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Did you like that? Were you doing that, Adele? I could see your actions. Our third story today is called Bear Moves. Look at that with a glittery disco ball. It's written by Ben Bailey Smith, aka Doc Brown, and Sav Akiyuz. Akiyuz? I hope I've said that right. And if you go to this website, 
there's a wrap along music video that goes with it. Now, am I gonna have to wrap? Goodness me. I hope not for your sake, but it could be a bit of fun. I am bear. <laughs> I've got a headband on. But I'm not bear, and this is not my underwear. These are just the clothes I choose when I'm in a dancing mood. The squirrel's closed his eyes. Do you have special clothes that you choose when you're in the mood to do something fun, like dancing? I'm sure you might think it's funny. Bring the music. Hit it, bunny. <laughs> bunny looks a bit unsure. Here's a move called furry breaking. Put your paws up. Get them shaking. Get up, get down, hit the ground. On your back, start spinning round. Wow, could you guys do that? Let's double check. So, put your paws up and shake them. And then you bend down. Maybe show off a little bit of your bottom while you're at it and then spit on the ground. That's his dance move. I reckon you guys could do that. Here's another one. Hold a pose that goes like this. Okay, bunny, music, switch. New music now. The bunny's the DJ. <laughs> this one's called the running bear. You run, but don't go anywhere. He's moving his arms and legs, but not actually running. Bears think they're like me. They're so not. What bears you know do the robot. <laughs> it's in a robot costume. Get down like me. I don't think so. How low can you go in limbo? You ever played limbo? Where you have a stick that you've got to go underneath by just bending your back? Lots of things to try in this book. One for mums and dads and whatnot. Grab a friend and do the foxtrot. Move your bodies nice and smooth. You to me and me to you. Now, do you think the squirrel looks happy about this? <laughs> How funny. He looks a bit worried. Poor squirrel. Here's a treat for kids and grown-ups. All you need's a box of donuts. Eat these and you have every chance of doing a great belly dance. Have you ever seen a belly dance before? It's where you wiggle your hips and your tummy wobbles. Oh, not really wobbles, wiggles. And if you have a tummy full of donuts, that'd work quite well. Giant donuts would be cooler. Climb inside and do the hauler. No more donuts in the pack. Time to have a different snack. Go. What's the snack? Not a donut. Is it a squirrel? What happens? <laughs> squirrel covered in saliva and spit running away. Where are you off to? You can't quit yet. Ah, he's dancing. That's the quick step. Oh well, bunny. Just us then. Start that music up again. The bunny's got headphones on now. The bunny's getting right into it. Look at all those bottoms. <laughs> we can do the twist this time. Turn around and wind behinds. One more dance, and this sounds crazy, but I need the perfect lady. Look, the bunny's pointing to him to say, I found one. Someone who is just my size, with paws that hit the floor and glide. Someone sweeter than a mango. Perfect. It takes two to tango. He's found a dance partner. And I wonder if the squirrel's found somewhere to go. Careful though, how low you stoop. Dancing can be tough. I'm pooped. <laughs> how fun was that? I really liked that. That was good fun. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this week's edition of Online Faraway Storytelling. I hope you enjoyed those three books. I think this week we need to do some of these dance moves. It'd be wrong if we didn't. You can rewind the story back to see some of them if you'd like to, but you could have a practice of this one, get some music playing where you have to put your hands up in the air and shake them around and then bend down and shake them around and then spin on your bottom with your arms and legs tucked in. You might need to be on the right kind of surface to do that. You could hold a pose like this. I bet you guys could do that while the music's going. You could do the running bear. You ask your mum or dad or pet adult in the house, they'll be able to show you the running bear where you put your arms in and out like you're moving but you don't actually go anywhere. And you can do the robot. And you could look all those up on YouTube, I reckon. There'd be some good videos on how to do that. You could even play a game of limbo. What a great book. And the other thing you can do is go to this website, www.iambearbook.com. Iambearbook.com. And it sounds like there's a, a wrap-along music video that you can watch. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to sing our farewell song now uh, before we finish up for the week. Are you ready to get started? I think that I'll go for a walk outside now. The summer sun's calling my name. I hear it now. I just can't stay inside all day. I've got to get out. Give me some of those rays. Everybody's laughing, sunny days. Everybody's smiling, sunny days. Do you know how weird it is to sing that song after we've just been talking about rap songs? It felt really weird. It felt like I should be rapping it. I wouldn't do that to you though. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. I hope you're all going okay. If you're at home and you're not able to get out much, I'm thinking of you. Bye-bye.